In this video, I'm going to introduce the topic of the uneven distribution of Earth's resources. The goal of this video is to help you understand that the uneven distribution of Earth's resources is the result of past and current geological processes. The important thing to remember here is that the geologic processes that happened in the past, like earthquakes or volcanoes, are the same processes that are happening today, like earthquakes and volcanoes, and they're going to continue to happen into the future. Earth's resources are distributed around the world because of these geologic processes. Processes like plate tectonics, which cause volcanic activity, shifting lands, um, elements of the water cycle and the rock cycle, such as weathering and erosion and sedimentation. All of these processes together, over time, have, you just, have distributed Earth's resources around the world. So while you have plate tectonics shifting the surface land for hundreds of millions of years, as you can see in this video, the rock cycle is happening, volcanic activity is happening all over the globe, you also have constant weathering and erosion by water and gravity. Sediments are created and the sedimentary processes bury dead animals underwater under layers and layers of sediment. They get buried very deep and they stay buried for a long time. Over hundreds of millions of years, the organic matter turns into what we call fossil fuels like oil and coal. The shifting land and the rock cycle also move minerals around, like iron, gold, and everything else we mine out of the earth. So geologic processes create and move natural resources around very, very slowly. So what are resources? Resources are things that we use. Earth's resources are the natural resources we extract or take from our planet. Some examples are minerals such as iron, gold, copper, energy like petroleum or oil, coal and natural gas, and groundwater. Natural resources are found all over the world, but they are not evenly distributed. Let's take a look at minerals. There are some very important metals we mine out of the ground, such as gold, iron, and copper. These are the three most highly valued metals in the United States. But for now, we're just going to look at copper. Like gold and iron, copper has been used for money, jewelry, and weapons in the past. Today, copper is used for infrastructure. Copper is used in buildings for decoration. Um, and over time, that copper turns green, like you see on the roof of this building, or on this lady. Copper is most important, however, uh, in electrical wiring, for heat, communications, and for powering just about everything on the planet. Without copper, we wouldn't have indoor lighting, for example. This is a breakdown of copper use. You can see here that copper is used primarily for building um, and construction, electronics, and transportation. Copper is an important resource because we use it every day in everyday things. This is the global distribution of copper deposits. The top four largest producers of copper are Chile, Peru, United States, and China. This is a map from the U.S. Geological Survey, and it shows where minerals are found and processed. The legend tells us what the different colors mean. Some parts of the landscape are sedimentary rock, some are igneous rock, and some are metamorphic rock. Since all minerals are found in rocks, they are part of the rock cycle. Different land types will have different mineral resources. You can very clearly see the uneven distribution of mineral resources with different colored dots in different places. Let's take a look very briefly at the Southwest United States. If we take a look at this region, you can see that we can find copper only in a few areas in the Southwest and a little bit further north. 
in the United States, Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, Nevada, and Montana accounted for 99% of copper production. But why is copper found in some places and not others? Well, it turns out this has to do with how copper deposits form. Copper and all other minerals are found in rocks, so they're part of the rock cycle and deposits take a long time to form. Liquid copper moves with convection and subduction and solidifies in the cracks in the already solid rocks. Copper deposits are usually associated with subduction zones. As magma continues to solidify into igneous rock, the fluid rich in copper moves into the cracks, eventually solidifying as well. Uplift, weathering, and erosion expose the copper deposits. And you can see in this rock, a lot of it is green, that's the copper. So this is igneous rock with some copper that has solidified in the cracks in the rock. And you can see here that all the copper deposits have lined up with um, previous or current subduction zones. Let's turn to energy. The three important fossil fuels are non-renewable resources that we use every day, oil, coal, and natural gas. You can see in this map of the United States that coal deposits are unevenly distributed around the country. And this has to do with how coal forms. In fact, all fossil fuels are located where they are because of how they formed. For oil and natural gas, tiny marine plants and animals that lived hundreds of millions of years ago were buried by thousands of layers of sediments. Over millions of years, they were buried and subjected to pressure from all of those layers and heat from Earth. Eventually, the remains were turned into oil and gas, and today we get to dig down and find them. For coal, there was a similar process, but in different areas. Coal formed where there were ancient swamps. These ancient swamps lived three to 400 million years ago and were covered with huge plants. Over time, the plants died and many layers of rocks and water covered the remains of these plants. And again, eventually with the pressure and the heat from the earth, these uh, remains were turned into coal. Coal is used in power plants all over the world. Coal provides 40% of the world's energy, and so it's an extremely important resource for us. Coal is used to heat up water in the power plant. The steam then turns a turbine, which is connected to a generator, which generates electricity. This is how all power plants work. The only difference is, that, um, is the fuel that's being used to burn to heat up the water and turn into steam. Coal reserves are unevenly distributed around the world. The three regions with, with the most coal are Asia and Oceania, Eurasia, and North America. You can see in this pie chart that the United States is actually the world uh, leader in the most coal reserves. And despite the ongoing production of coal since the Industrial Revolution, it's estimated that in the United States, we have enough coal to last 222 years. Okay, let's look at this map again of the United States and where coal deposits are formed. And then if we take a look at this map, you could see that the states that produce the most coal for the country are Wyoming, West Virginia, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, and Illinois. These five states account for almost two thirds of all the coal production in the United States. So let's now talk about water and how water is distributed on Earth. We know that about two thirds of the planet is covered in water. But not all of that water is drinkable. All of the fresh water on Earth, that is not salt water, can be found in this small round marble of water that you see here. So the liquid fresh water is the smaller dot right next to it on the right. And even smaller than that are, is the water that exists in lakes and rivers. And that's that tiny little dot. 
So all the fresh water on the planet accounts for only 2.5% of all of the water that exists. We're going to take a look at 30.1% of that 2.5%, um, which is groundwater. In this simulation, you could see rain and precipitation around the globe. An increase in water on the planet competes with the evaporation on a daily basis. So you're seeing the rate of change in water. And as you can guess, the brown parts that you see now uh, don't retain the water as well as the green parts. And that's because the soil is different. So different soils will retain different amounts of water, where the green parts are actually retaining more of that water. It's actually really difficult to predict exactly how much water is underground or in all of those rivers and lakes at the same time. But even though we can't say for certain how much groundwater there is, we can see that there are increases and decreases. So this is a map that shows the increase and decrease of groundwater since 2003. The red shows decreasing groundwater and the blue shows increasing groundwater. So you can see here in California, since 2003, we've had a lot of decrease in our groundwater. And then let's zoom out to the rest of the world. This has been happening all over the world. You can see many red parts where there have been decreases in groundwater and quite a few blue spots where there have been increases in groundwater. So again, even with water, though water is part of the water cycle and it's always refreshing itself, um, there are still uneven distributions of where that fresh water is. In the last year, several states have suffered or are still suffering severe drought. So some of those states actually have to import water from other areas to meet demand. In terms of renewable or non-renewable, water is a bit tricky. We know water moves in a cycle, so water is renewable. However, fresh water is limited and can sometimes be inaccessible or polluted. Some areas can also suffer extreme droughts and run out of groundwater for a time. So while water is a renewable resource, it can be inaccessible or run out in some areas some of the time. For fossil fuels, on the other hand, vast amounts of time are required for them to form. Since it takes so many millions of years for fossil fuels to form, we consider them non-renewable because we will use all of them up well before more is formed. And finally, for copper, there's a fixed amount of copper in the world. So if we dig all of the copper out, well, there will just be none left. So copper is definitely a non-renewable resource. In summary, the uneven distribution of Earth's resources are the result of past and current geologic processes. Resources are typically limited and non-renewable due to the long amounts of time required for some resources to form. And as resources are used up by humans, they're depleted from the sources until they can be replenished, which may not be for millions of years.